Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nally again. So in this video I want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, chemical properties and physical properties. So remember earlier we uh, started by talking about two types of changes that could occur with substances, right? We talked about uh, physical changes, which is basically, remember, that just is what we're referring to when we talk about changes in physical states, like uh, things going from solid, liquid to gas, but with the same type of chemical components, uh, atomic composition. A chemical change, on the other hand, would be if you're actually changing the atomic composition. Now, when we talk about a chemical reaction, we're really referring to a chemical change. So they, these two uh, phrases mean the same thing. They mean uh, change in the atomic composition. Now, we can also talk about physical versus chemical property. So physical property would be a property uh, of a substance that you can measure without changing the atomic composition of uh, the sub sample itself. So for example, a weight uh, would be or mass would be something that you measure without really changing the uh, you know atomic characteristics of your of your sample. You can measure its uh, temperature uh, at the, when it's uh, converting from solid to liquid, which is called the melting point. Or you can measure the boiling point, which is the temperature at which the substance uh, converts from liquid to gas. But all of these uh, would be considered the uh, physical property. Density would be another one. Uh, that's another physical property. When you uh, calculate density, you're measuring mass and volume of the uh, substance. You're not changing the, the atomic nature of the substance. is still the same. Gold is still gold. You're not changing gold to something else when you're uh, measuring or calculating its density. A chemical property, on the other hand, is basically a, a measure of how, uh, what is, you know, the ability of this substance to undergo a chemical change. In other words, how uh, well can a particular substance undergo a chemical reaction, okay, how reactive it is. So this is often also referred to as the chemical reactivity. So if you want examples of these things, it's basically, for example, if we want to measure how well something can react with oxygen, um, a lot of times this is in combustion reaction, so we can say it's flammability uh, would be one a measure of uh, a, a chemical, would be one type of chemical property. We're measuring how much or how well can a substance react and produce a, a flame. Uh, another um, measure would be something like, um, you know, liver toxicity, for example, which is, you know, how, uh, how much does a, a compound or a drug or a molecule react with liver and causes a uh, toxic reaction. So that's dependent on the type of molecules you have, you know, uh, what kind of, uh, again, what kind of molecules it is, and, you know, different molecules at the same amount would give you different toxicity, okay? So all of those would be uh, what we call chemical reactivity or chemical property. Both of, both of these properties are useful. We make uh, measurements for both of these all the time because uh, we want to understand what the, all the properties of the substance. Okay, now uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, some of the properties of uh, uh, physical properties you can measure are volume, mass, length, col uh, color would be another physical property you can measure. Uh, there's a couple of things that uh, are new here. Malleability refers to how well, you can uh, shape the uh, a particular substance. For example, things like metal usually are, are pr pretty malleable. They can be shaped into different uh, uh, forms, whereas uh, things like uh, sulfur, for example, a non-metal, uh, exists as a powder in the solid form, so you can't really shape that into any form at all. Okay? All right. Now, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, flammability would be an example of... Uh, of chemical properties, uh, but another example that I didn't mention is corrosiveness, uh, basically a, a measure of how well a substance would react with, you know, air and water, uh, air containing oxygen usually. It's a measure uh, sort of uh, of uh, uh, substance ability to undergo a, a redox reaction, an oxidation reduction reaction, something we'll talk about later in the semester. But all of these is a measure of the ability of the substance to undergo a certain type of chemical reaction, in this case a combustion reaction, in this case a, a redox reaction with specific substances, and toxicity would then be referring to a reaction of another with, with another specific molecule. Okay? Now, one way to look at properties of the substance is to, to define it whether as a physical, 
versus chemical property. But another way to look at it is to think about these two terms here, which is extensive versus intensive property. An extensive property is a, a property that when you measure it, it's going to change its value proportionally to the amount of mass that you have. Why is mass important? Well, mass in, is important because we're studying matter, and matter is, uh, by definition, basically something that contains mass. So uh, what we want to know is, is a specific property uh, changing as a function of mass? If the mass goes up, does the property does that particular property go up as well in, in, in value? So uh, an example or several examples of extensive properties are uh, weight, okay? So here's, uh, I'm illustrating the same person here in, in two different uh, masses, obviously a bigger mass here and a smaller mass here. And what you can see is that obviously the weight is obviously a property that changes very clearly as a function of mass. The more mass you have, the more weight you have. Volume is another thing that usually changes as a function of mass, right? So if you have, um, unless we're talking about gases, we're talking about solid, you know, if you have uh, one pound of gold versus, you know, a hundred pounds of gold, the volume occupied by that gold would be very different when you have one gram versus a hundred grams. So there's some kind of uh, increase in volume. Area is another thing that uh, changes with mass. Uh, what about uh, intensive properties? These are properties that are what we refer to as independent of mass, meaning that the value of these properties don't change e even though the mass changes, okay? So what are some examples of this? Well, if you look at these, these uh, two pictures here of the same woman, you can see that her hair color, for example, is not changing. So color is a property, it's an intensive property. It doesn't change just because your mass is changing. Uh, you know, the skin color wouldn't change either uh, if, if you're not exposing yourself to the sun. So, so that's, you know, again, independent of mass, right? Um, the, uh, uh, spe you know, speaking specifically of, of substances, temperature would not change. You know, if you're, um, uh, let's say you're talking about a healthy human being, temperature should be around 37 degrees Celsius. Now, whether you're a uh, five-year-old or whether you're 40-year-old, your temperature would remain the same if you're a healthy human being. So it doesn't matter that, obviously, as a five-year-old versus a 40-year-old, your mass is quite different, but your temperature stays the same. Uh, the melting point, for example, of, of one, uh, you know, one gram of ice versus a block, a huge block of ice, would be exactly at zero degrees, uh, so it's independent of mass. Density would be another thing that's um, an intensive property because if you have one gram of gold versus, you know, 10 grams of gold or one kilogram, a thousand grams of gold, you're going to have the same exact density. If it's gold, it's going to have that same value of density. It's not going to change. Okay. All right. Let's, you know, put in a, a, an actual example of ex extensive versus intensive property. Here's two uh, types of sulfur. One is sulfur crystal, the other one is sulfur powder. What you can see is that, you know, depending on the mass, right, if you have one of them, the mass is 0.84 grams, the other one is 39 grams. And for the 39 grams one, the volume of that uh, sulfur is 18.8 .8 cubic centimeters, whereas for this one, the, the volume is only 4.1 cubic centimeters. So the mass clearly is correlated with to the um, volume. On the other hand, the two intensive properties that are listed here, the color and the melting point, are completely independent of the uh, mass. So in both cases, the colors are yellow. In both cases, the melting points are 115.2 degrees Celsius. So there's no difference, even though the mass is clearly different between these two samples. Okay. So one of the things I want to emphasize here is that intensive properties are usually being used by uh, chemists or scientists in general to help you identify what the substance is because that, uh, quant that property doesn't change. So whether you have a lot of sulfur or a little bit of sulfur, if I know that the melting point is 115.2, if I were able to melt a substance that I don't know and I find it to be 115.2, then I might make a guess that that substance is... Um, make a guess that the substance uh, is sulfur just because that matches with the melting point of sulfur and I know that sulfur always melts at 115.2. Okay, so 
um, that's what the value of having a intensive property is. It's sort of it serves as a fingerprint for that particular substance. An extensive property, on the other hand, are used more to determine how much of the material you have. So if the volume is bigger, you know that there should be more mass in there, okay, of your uh, sample.